Hello everyone. Today I will discuss chapter 1 of the Easy Builder Pro user manual. In the first portion of this tutorial, I will teach you where to download our software and how to install it. This will allow us to continue with the second half of this tutorial as I explain in detail the various application files that will be located in the installation directory. Check out the description below for quick links to different topics discussed within the video as well as a link to our website. And don't forget to subscribe to receive updates on the latest videos within this series. Before we begin the installation process, it's important to note that the latest version of Easy Builder Pro requires Windows 7 or greater. To download Easy Builder Pro and the user manual, please open your browser and navigate to wintechusa.com. Prior to downloading our software from the system homepage, you'll need to create a new account. On the top right corner, select Login, and when prompted, select Register. You'll be redirected to a page allowing you to enter the information that will be associated with your account. After you've registered an account, go ahead and log in to your account by selecting Login on the top right of the screen. On our system homepage, you'll notice several tabs at the top. We'll need to select the download tab to locate our installation file. On the download page, you'll notice several sections of free content, which you can explore after this video. For right now, we'll select Easy Builder Pro version 6.03.02.294. This file may take some time to download. Right now would be a good place to pause the video. Once the installation file has downloaded, you'll need to extract the contents of this folder. Once extracted, you'll find the setup application file within your folder. Go ahead and select this file, and when prompted to, allow this app to make changes to your device. Click Yes. Select the language you prefer and click Next on the bottom right. Before continuing, you should read through the license agreement. After you accept this agreement, select Next on the bottom right. Select your preferred install location and start menu folder and click Next to finish configuring your installation. When prompted to, click Install and then select Finish. Now that we're finished with the installation, we're going to navigate to our installation folder. We have several different applications installed. The first one you'll notice within this folder is the Administrator Tools. By using the Administrator Tools, you can export user account information, USB security key settings, or even email contacts and server settings. This allows you to change settings in an efficient and portable way. To demonstrate this, I have designed a simple project that will illustrate these features. After inserting the USB security key, I will receive a notification upon its success or failure, as well as information as to who is currently logged in. Using my import user list, I can also import the contacts I've created we currently have two available users, however after importing the contact list, we'll then see our additional users. The next application we'll take a look at within our installation directory is CMT Viewer. Now I will demonstrate the use of CMT Viewer by connecting to the HMI that has our current demo project. CMT Viewer is a fantastic solution by WinTech to allow both remote access and multi-user control. As you can see on the screen, once the application has been opened, I can click on the orange plus to search for my HMI. Once the HMI is found, I can click on the blue plus sign to connect, and after entering the HMI password, the project will begin to download. After the project download is complete, I can assume remote control over the HMI. 
the HMI shows the same configuration we've created with an EasyBuilder Pro. On my CMT3072, I will receive a prompt after inserting the USB that asks us if we would like to upload or download data to the device. I'm going to click close. You'll notice I'm automatically logged in with the USB key. This is a setting available within the system parameters of our project. The alternative is a function key that will allow us to select when we would like to log in via USB key. Notice that we have received a 1 in our info box, indicating the login was successful. The operator list is exactly what we've predefined within the project. And after clicking our import user account button, you'll notice we now have additional users available. Now that we've demonstrated remote control, we'll move on to the next application that is downloaded upon installation, Easy Access 1.0. This application is an important tool for long distance encrypted remote communication. Although Easy Access 1.0 is downloaded upon installation, it is an outdated version. The latest version can be downloaded from our website, wentechusa.com where we downloaded Easy Builder Pro. The latest version is called Easy Access 2.0 and can be configured by setting up an account domain via the Easy Access 2.0 website. It is important to note that Easy Access requires an applicable HMI model that can be found within the Easy Access 2.0 user manual or within our HMI brochure. To set up an account domain, we'll click Create Account Domain. From this section, you'll enter your account information and select Register when you're finished. Now you can log into your new domain by clicking Domain and typing in your domain name and password, and then clicking Login. You'll notice four tabs located at the top of the page. From the User tab, you can edit, add, or delete HMI users, or assign a user an HMI. Within the Device tab, under HMI List, you can configure the HMI group and user settings. You'll also notice here that we can add a new HMI or transfer an existing HMI to another domain. To add a new HMI, simply select Add HMI and determine if it will be added via activation card for unlicensed HMIs or via session ID and password for pre-licensed HMIs. The HMI Group tab allows you to configure a new HMI group so multiple users can be added to a single group and assign the same HMI within that group. The Folder tab allows you to create folders so that you can categorize your HMIs. Top of cards are used to add more high-speed data to your account in the event you run over the free gigabyte you receive monthly. The Notification tab allows you to view users and HMIs that utilize third-party software or social media to receive push notifications such as WeChat, Facebook, or Line. Once you have everything set up and configured properly, you can download the Easy Access 2.0 application by selecting your domain name in the upper right-hand corner and clicking Log Out. Once you're on the home page, you can download the application near the bottom of the screen by selecting Windows under Application. Save the file and then install it when the download is complete. Follow the prompts to install the application and then when finished, open Easy Access 2.0. Upon opening the program, you'll be prompted to enter your domain name, user ID, or admin, and then your associated password. 
After this, click Login. From your home screen, you'll see the HMIs on your account. In the top right corner, we have five selections to choose from. Selecting the message icon will reveal HMI notifications and allow you to enable easy access push notifications. The gear icon will open the easy access settings menu where within the general tab you can configure VPN, network, and event information within the application. The information tab will give you software information about this application. The Language tab will allow you to select the preferred language within the application. Finally, the Path tab will allow you to select the directory for the executable files associated with Easy Access, such as CMT Viewer or VNC Viewer. The small arrow will prompt you to log out. The drop-down menu will allow you to sort HMIs based on a specified order or circumstance. Selecting the Log button will reveal activity information relating to the Easy Access VPN, user account control, or graphic interface. If you click on an HMI, you'll reveal more information about the events in your project as well as the HMI's successful or unsuccessful connection to Easy Access servers. The Access Settings menu will allow you to select an application to use remotely, such as VNC or CMT Viewer, as well as enter in the appropriate FTP password for the HMI so that you can retrieve files remotely. Selecting the small intersecting arrows next to the HMI will allow you to log in to control the HMI when the HMI is online after selecting this, the application will log in to your HMI and present you with a small blue button which will enable VNC or CMT Viewer so that you can remotely control your device from anywhere in the world. The small red arrow underneath the IP will allow you to perform a pass-through to the PLC or to Wintex built-in codices. This is an amazing application with tons of features that will allow you to troubleshoot the device from anywhere. Easy Builder Pro can be opened via your desktop shortcut or by a quick search. As the application boots, you'll get some indication as to your software version, once running, you'll be prompted to select an HMI model and then the application will load and open your system parameters. Within the parameters, you can add your PLC driver and configure additional information. Because we have so many videos on the use and layout of Easy Builder Pro and so many more on the way, I'm not going to go into great depth on the development of an HMI program. Easy Builder stays true to its name and programming requires minimal effort. You'll find a familiar and friendly layout with each tab on top indicating what objects or system settings you might find within. The windows on either side serve to navigate the project itself and facilitate the creation of new windows or allow you to search your system libraries and much more. Check out the playlist tab of our channel for an in-depth introduction to EasyBuilder Pro, as well as technical tutorials and project demonstrations. Heading back to our system directory, we're going to locate the Easy Converter. Now within your HMI program, if you happen to be collecting data via data sampling, an operation log, or an event log, your HMI will generate a DB, EVT, or DTL file. This file can then be read via Easy Converter. However, as the name implies, the file can also be converted to an Excel format by using this application. To do this, I'll open up a DB file 
I already have saved on my computer by clicking the folder icon. As you can see, I'm prompted to select a file date range to filter out any unnecessary information. Now, to convert this file, all I have to do is click our little green X in the top left corner. And that's it. That's all you need to do to create a friendly file extension. Since we covered so much ground, I feel like it's time to introduce the Easy Diagnoser. For demonstration purposes, I'm using an MT8073 IE, but this program can be used with all non-CMT models, as CMT models require their own diagnostic tool. The Diagnoser is a way to analyze the connection between your HMI and PLC to determine what communication faults may be present by giving you an error code. The layout shows the data transfer between your HMI and PLC on the far left. In the center, you'll find the device list, as well as objects associated with each device, and on the far right, we have the PLC and HMI information. Just as a demonstration, selecting Capture within our Data Transfer section will highlight each object in red that is having communication trouble. If we take a look at our object, we'll notice it has a package ID of 22, which corresponds with our numeric input object in the center. This object has an error code of 22, which indicates no reply from that device. That is a simple but effective demonstration of how to use our Easy Diagnoser. For a complete list of error codes, you can download the Easy Builder Pro Manual from WinTechUSA.com. Within our PDF manual, you can find this list in section 33-9, and it looks like the following. At this point, we'll go ahead and move on to our next application. Easy Printer was developed to work with some of our HMIs prior to the CMT series, and can be accessed within our system directory. To use Easy Printer, you will need to enable it within your project by heading to your printer slash backup server tab within the system parameters. Then, you'll need to create an object to create screenshots for you. And in this example, I've used a function key with the settings as follows. Now, we'll go ahead and configure our desktop application by selecting options at the top of the screen. Within this menu, we'll need to select Settings. And within these settings, we'll go ahead and confirm these default values. Port 8005, Admin, Password should be 6 ones, and Use IP Address should be selected, and we'll enter IP underscore for that. Within this menu, you'll also notice a hard copy section. Here you can detail the output sections. Now it's difficult to demonstrate an output to a printer. I felt that it would be better to show the screen hard copy saving to my defined folder for this demonstration. You may have noticed within our system parameters, the heading is printer slash backup. This is because you can also use this as a backup server for a recipe database, a historical event log, and much more. To do this, we'll return to our system settings within Easy Printer and select a destination for our backup folder. Within our Easy Builder Pro project, I've actually already configured a data sampling object and a historical data table. The only additional tool I've created here is a backup per page object that can be found within the object tab. The backup object will backup our data table and send this over to our Easy Printer application via the following configuration. Since everything is already set up, let's run a simulation and demonstrate how this works. Using VNC Viewer alongside Easy Printer, I'll go ahead and select our screen capture you'll notice we receive a notification that the process was initiated and now we can see that this process was completed. While we're at it, let's demonstrate our backup server. I'll enter in some mock data first and wait a few seconds. 
Now, after clicking backup, I should receive a notification, and looking at my folder, I now have a CSV file to open that displays my recorded data. It's that simple. But it's also important to note that our CMTs don't have an option for this within the system parameters. Instead, we have a printer section within the model tab and countless ways to backup data. In other words, this is no longer necessary for our advanced CMT models. Easy Simulator is a tool that can be used to load EXOB files outside of Easy Builder. Although it does the job, the process can be a little time consuming as it requires an edit to a definition file to define the location. However, we have several easy and convenient alternatives to this. The first can be found within Easy Builder Pro. There are two ways to run a simulation within Easy Builder Pro and four shortcuts for this. The first shortcut is always on screen, no matter what tab you're in, by default. It's the small square with an X in the middle located at the top left of your screen, near File. If you click this, your project should save and compile and run an offline simulation. If your project does not automatically save before compiling, you may need to enable this via your application parameters, which are available by clicking File and then selecting Preference. The first option allows you to automatically save and compile your project before downloads and simulations. If this is unchecked, you may want to consider checking this to eliminate the need to do this manually each time you run a simulation. Now I'll run a quick demonstration of our offline simulation before showing you the rest. After I select it, it will automatically save and compile and open up our offline simulation where you can test your HMI program independent of the PLC. If you would like to run an online simulation, go ahead and select the small drop down arrow next to the undo and redo arrow in the top left corner. In this menu, select online simulation and a new option will appear allowing you to run an online simulation. Now these options are available in the Project tab of EasyBuilder Pro, allowing you to run an online or offline simulation of your project. In case you'd rather not open up EasyBuilder Pro, this can also be accomplished within our Utility Manager. Opening our Utility Manager, you'll see that we have simulations available to us in the Design tab. It is important to point out that you should select the correct HMI for your simulation by clicking on the HMI in the top left corner revealing the drop down menu. After this, you can run a simulation from a compiled project file of your choosing by clicking simulation and searching for your HMI project's compiled file. We'll continue on following the manual and the next application we're going to take a look at is our Easy System Settings application. Easy System Settings is a way to pre-configure your HMI settings prior to downloading a project. Opening this application, you'll find the layout is pretty similar to your HMI system settings and configuration should be fairly simple. To speed up this segment, I've already predefined our settings here because I feel it's self-explanatory. Once you've finished configuring the settings, you can save this to a location of your choosing by clicking File and Save. To use this file, open your Easy Builder Pro project. Within the Project tab, select Build. And when prompted, check the box that says Use System Settings and then locate your config file location. Select the USB or SD card that you want to save the file on and then click Build. Before I change these settings, I'll show you our LAN 1 IP through VNC Viewer. Now on our HMI, after I insert the USB, I should receive this prompt here. I will then select Load System Settings. The HMI will then load with your new settings configuration. It may take a minute here. Now that it's done loading, 
we can see our LAN1 IP has changed to what I've pre-configured. And that's all there is to it. The next program we're going to look at is EasyWatch. EasyWatch is the perfect tool for monitoring multiple HMIs and corresponding PLC addresses from your computer via Ethernet. To demonstrate this, I've set up a basic project here that will show us several LW registers where I can enter in data as well as a basic macro that will automatically reset these values to 5. To monitor these addresses, I first added my HMI by clicking the HMI Manager on the top left corner of my screen. Then I selected the Monitor button to add a new monitor address and I added in my LW registers. I've also added in my macro zero so that I can activate it remotely through EasyWatch for demonstration purposes. I'll go ahead and run a demonstration now. Plugging in a few values, you'll notice these values then populate our EasyWatch monitor objects. And after selecting active on our macro object, these values return to five. This is a neat way to establish some control over your project via macro as well as monitor multiple devices at once. Now that we're getting well acquainted with the various programs in our directory, I'd like to show everyone our recipe editor. The recipe editor is used to create and edit RCP, EMI, or CSV files. As a tip, if you ever get confused as to which file extension is correct for your application, you can check within our Utility Manager. The Utility Manager is another application installed with EasyBuilder Pro. Navigating to the Publish tab from my selected CMT model, I'm going to go ahead and select the Download button. I'm presented with a lot of options here, but to get to the point, the RW and RWA is our retentive memory selection and utilizes our RCP file extension. The EMI is not listed here, but this is our extended memory option and is noted within the extended memory tab of the system parameters within EasyBuilder Pro. Okay, so I've got a basic project running here with some of our RWA files displayed. Within our recipe editor, I created an RWA RCP file by clicking New, I then went through and identified my data type and length and gave it a name. Now it's important to define the word length on top. As an example, if your data is 10 words total in length and you have 10 lines of data, you're going to have from 0 to 99. I'll go ahead and open my data here. And I'll be honest, all I did was open a CSV file that I had exported from a recipe database table here and then use the editor as a way to convert it into a retentive memory for demonstration purposes. That's what it looks like in our system here, and this file can be saved as a CSV by clicking our little green X in the top corner, or as a RCP or EMI by selecting File, Save As, I would like to mention that you can open multiple files within our editor in case you're moving around data or whatever your application might be. It can definitely come in handy. To move our RCP file to the HMI, all I need to do is use our Utility Manager and open the Download Manager that I just demonstrated a minute ago. And I'll select our RWA Retentive Memory. And then I'll define its location find my HMI, and then I'll click Download. Now within our VNC Viewer, we can tell that our data has now been transferred. If you were using extended memory, that would be saved by a predefined name to your external memory and then inserted into our HMI, as you probably guessed. That name can be found within our system parameters under the Extended Memory tab.
The Utility Manager is an excellent application that condenses all of Wintech's tools into one menu. In the top left corner, you can search for your HMI. We have five separate tabs that allow you to easily navigate and find the correct program for your application. I encourage anyone to go through these tabs and explore our various tools. Unfortunately, I won't be covering the Utility Manager within this video because I plan to cover it extensively within our next video which covers Chapter 2 of the Easy Builder Pro User Manual. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.